Welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Melanie McKinney, Programs Coordinator for Can Do Multiple Sclerosis. Thank you for acting on the belief that you are more than your MS by attending tonight's webinar using adaptive equipment with exercise with Can Do MS Programs Consultants, Julianne Hansen Zlatev, Occupational Therapist, and Kathy San Martino, Physical Therapist. I want to start tonight's presentation by talking a little about Can Do Multiple Sclerosis. Can Do MS is an innovative provider of lifestyle empowerment programs for people living with MS and their support partners. We are the start of a whole new way of thinking about and living with MS. Can Do MS empowers people to move beyond their MS by giving them the knowledge, skills, tools, and confidence to adopt healthy lifestyle behaviors, actively co-manage their disease, and live their best lives. In 2010, CanDo MS launched its new website, www.mscando.org. Please visit the website where you can register for upcoming webinars, listen to archived webinars, check out our CanDo MS Lifestyle Empowerment Programs, including our upcoming CanDo 4-Day Programs and Jumpstart 1-Day Programs. You can share your CanDo promise and learn ways you can contribute to or get involved with CanDo MS. A few housekeeping items before we get started this evening. Our presenters will address questions and comments at the end of the presentation, and we certainly encourage questions and comments throughout the presentation. To ask a question, type your question in the chat feature located on the left of your computer screen. To submit a question, type in the small box that says Chat with Presenters. This presentation is being recorded and will be archived on CanDoMS's website. You are more than welcome to view the presentation again, and if you've missed one of our other webinars, you can find the archived version on the website. For those of you who are attending live tonight, you will receive an email tomorrow with copies of this PowerPoint presentation. As many of you discovered when you logged into the webinar, new in 2000, 2011, you can listen to the live webinar through your computer speakers rather than having to call in. So the job of the live participants tonight is to, one, submit your questions and comments in the chat box, and two, complete the evaluation at the end of the webinar, and three, review the webinar schedule and register for the upcoming webinars. And we have two great speakers lined up for tonight's webinar. Um, Kathy San Martino has been a physical therapist since 1984 and specializes in treating patient, patient, excuse me, patients with neurological diagnosis, including MS. Since 2000, she has worked at Casa Colina Rehab Center in Pomona, California, where she is an outpatient clinical coordinator and works with a local neurologist in a weekly MS clinic. She runs the MS wellness programs for the local National MS Society, and she also directs the wheelchair and seating clinic. Julianne Hansen Zlatev has been an occupational therapist for 18 years. Over the past 15 years, she has specialized in neurological and neuro degenerative diagnoses with an emphasis on stroke recovery, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's disease. Julianne has worked with Rocky Mountain MS Center for many years as a consultant for the rehabilitation clinic. And Julianne currently owns a private practice in Castle Rock, Colorado, and she enjoys working with individuals to achieve movement and balance in their daily lives. Now before we get started with the uh, presentation, I'd like to do a quick survey to get a feel for who's on the webinar this evening. There's a survey that's up on the screen, and we'd like for you to tell us a little bit about yourself. First, are you a person living with MS, a support partner, a healthcare professional, or other? And it looks like, oh, we've got a few support partners and healthcare professionals. And of course, uh, the majority are individuals living with MS. Thank you all for joining us this evening. So let's go ahead and uh, get started with Julianne from Castle Rock, Colorado. Thanks so much, Julianne. All right. Thank you very much, Melanie. And uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening on the webinar. Um, as I have said before, um, I'm an occupational therapist. And uh, let's see, are we at the next slide there? Yep. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and a couple of years ago, 
the occupational therapy profession uh, came up with a moniker called Tools for the Job of Living. Uh, they since changed it, but I really loved that one, and I thought with our topic tonight that it was a, a, a good moniker to put to tonight. So um, the next thing I'll talk about is uh, what can occupational therapy do for you? And um, I wanted to talk about this a little bit just because sometimes people don't have much exposure to occupational therapists, so I wanted to address that. Um, occupational therapists want to maximize independence and daily activity. And daily activity doesn't mean uh, just getting dressed or taking a shower or eating a meal or preparing a meal. It means what you do throughout the entirety of your day. So if there are challenges present in driving or in the work activities that you do or hobbies or um, exercises, um, then consulting with an occupational therapist can be really useful for you. Um, an OT can help you discover resources in your community that you may not have known were there. Uh, things like adapted yoga programs or hydrotherapy or equine therapy programs, um, even down to individuals who supply uh, really good services. We can also assess your body use and position for tasks and activities. So what we're looking for there is maximizing um, your performance and minimizing uh, the waste of energy and how you use your body. We also assess and recommend the need for tools and adaptive equipment. Uh, sometimes making some a task or a job easier or an exercise easier is as simple as changing how you use your body. Other times it's more appropriate to incorporate a tool or adaptive equipment. And we can assess and recommend environmental changes and adaptations that again will make uh, life a little easier to pursue. So on next there, thank you. <laughs> so where can you meet up with occupational therapists? Well, you can uh, find us in a variety of places. Uh, home health agencies are always a good choice, and the best way to hook up with those is to get a referral from your physician. Um, we are found in rehabilitation units in hospitals or skilled nursing facilities. We are in outpatient rehabilitation centers. And many times you can hunt down an OT uh, through the National MS Society or through your local MS chapter. Uh, often OTs will consult with or be on staff uh, with some of the chapters. And I put school systems last uh, because predominantly the OTs there are going to uh, specialize in pediatric care, but they may know of other people in the community um, who, would, who would meet your needs. So always we're kind of interconnected, and if you have a child in school and you'd like to find an OT for yourself, why then that might be another way to do that. So there are so many different types of adaptations and tools. Um, it really is, it always amazes me how if there is a challenge or a difficulty, how somebody has come up with a very clever way to address it, either through a tool or through changes. Um, it's really neat. And I could probably keep you on the line for hours and hours, and we could talk a long time about tools, but I won't. And I'll just kind of limit it to talking about what might be out there for exercise. And Kathy is going to go into much more detail um, about some of the exercise uh, tools as well. So there are many, many types of hand exercises that can help you strengthen or, or improve the coordination in your hands. There are several different types of pulleys that you can use to exercise your shoulders. And you can adapt those pulleys to exercise or stretch your trunk and torso or exercise your hips and knees, things like that. There's such a thing as TheraBand and TheraTube. You can use that for strengthening or stretching for your fingers, hands, arms, legs, torso. There's such a thing as loop attachments. So if maintaining a grip or having a grip in the first place is difficult or challenging for equipment, we can uh, fasten on loop attachments to make that easier. Probably most people have heard of therapy balls or physio balls. Um, there are so many different ways to use a therapy ball. Um, you can use it for stretching. You can use it for balance. You can use it for aerobic activity. It's, it's really an, an, a very fun way to exercise. There are things called pedal exercises. And quite simply, that's a frame that sits on the floor, and it's got pedals on it. And you can put that 
wherever you need it to be. So you can use it from a wheelchair or from a lounge chair or from a sofa. So you can have the benefit of bicycling um, without having to actually get on a bicycle. Also, there are things called hand bikes. Uh, people may be familiar with those. Uh, if moving legs is uh, challenging and you still want to get good aerobic activity, a hand bike might be a really good choice. There are stretch assists. And um, those can be something like TheraBand, or there are uh, like rope ladders that you can use that are specifically designed to help with stretching exercises. There's something called a sit-to-stand exerciser, and that is if someone is having trouble with coming sit-to-stand. There's a little pneumatic device that helps get them up, and then your own muscles take over, and you can exercise and become stronger in the sit-to-stand and standing. There are little balance pods for hands or feet, very brightly colored. They kind of look like a porcupine. And I will predominantly use those when stretching fingers and wrists is uh, painful or challenging. And it's a nice, easy way to, to stretch those tissues uh, with, a, with a minimum of pain. There's such a thing called TheraPutty. And that's a lot like Silly Putty, um, but it's a lot more durable. And, it, and it's, uh, I think it smells better. So there's also one thing I wanted to mention, too, is a BOSU balance trainer. And that looks like a physio ball, but it's cut in half, and it's on a stable frame. And again, it's got a bunch of different uses. You can use it for stretching. You can use it to st stimulate balance. There's just a lot of different ways to use that, and it's rather fun. So I'll have the next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So probably the bigger question is when to consider adapted equipment. And for most individuals that I work with, um, that's really the biggest question that they have. Is it time to go into adapted equipment? Um, and it, it can be a very difficult decision. So there's four things um, that we'll talk about tonight to consider. When an exercise or an activity produces extreme fatigue with poor recovery, so in other words, if your fatigue after an exercise is extremely severe and it overrides the effects of the exercise and that doesn't change over time, then it might be time to consider modifying the exercise or modifying how you do the exercise. Um, deconditioning is a little different. And your condition will change and the, the positive effects of exercise will begin to assert themselves over the fatigue. If, it, if the fatigue is coming from deconditioning. So this is a little bit different um, and might signal a time to consider equipment. Or if you dread the logistics of performing the exercise or activity. So I had uh, a client who told me, I really enjoy exercising and I really get a lot out of it and it's really beneficial to me, but I just dread going down the stairs to the basement to get to my equipment. And most of the time now, I'm just not doing it. And so when, at, at that point in time, it might be time to consider a couple of options, one of them being perhaps a stair glide that can make the stairs sort of a non-issue for going up and down them, or moving the equipment into a place where you can very easily access it. Uh, and and in, the, in their case, they move their equipment to where they could easily access it. If you cannot perform the exercise or activity without assistance, it's a good time to consult with an occupational or physical therapist to see if there's a different exercise that might be better, or is there a different way to perform the exercise. Um, now, needing assistance is not a bad thing. It can be uh, uh, just fine. Uh, but also, there might be ways to use your body differently that will allow uh, a person to, to do an exercise independently. And as we all know, that's very empowering. And the last thing to consider is whether a distal or far part of your body is weaker than the proximal or near part of your body. So in other words, um, your hand is weaker than your shoulder. Um, and so that kind of nixes out some of the exercises of choice that you may have done in the past or exercises that, that might be useful to you. There are lots of ways to adapt that particular exercise um, to make it so that you can do it. So I'll go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, I just put up a few just 
resources. Um, two of my favorites are the catalogs that are mentioned on the top of the screen here, uh, North Coast Medical and the Salmon's uh, Patterson Medical. Um, and then I did a quick Google search as well uh, when I was preparing for this and found a couple of websites. So The Right Stuff and ADLSolutions.com, those had some really nice options and it was kind of fun to hunt through those. You also can, when you're considering this, check with local MS societies or chapters uh, for local resources. In Denver, we have a fantastic store called You Can, Too Can. Um, so you can go and browse in the shop and, and answer questions and handle things with your hands. Uh, it's a really nice resource. And, and also checking in with your chapter community to see um, what works for some people or if someone is maybe looking to get rid of some of their equipment. It's a nice way to get a hold of some. And then, of course, checking on Craigslist or eBay or uh, your local ads is a good way to save money when looking for equipment. Uh, so that really encompasses what I wanted to talk about with occupational therapy tonight. Uh, again, I'll be available to answer questions at the end. Uh, and now I will turn it over to Kathy. Thank you for your time. Actually, before we go into Kathy, um, we do have um, an additional polling question. And um, this is um, just kind of a fun one. We're wondering um, if you spend time exercising each week, um, about how many minutes per week uh, would you estimate that you spend exercising? Ah, actually, well, that's a great turnout. Um, we've got some people out and getting active, and um, I hope that this webinar um, motivates you a little bit further. Um, now we're going to go into Kathy San Martino, uh, PT from Pomona, California. Thanks so much, Kathy. Thank you very much. So first of all, we're going to discuss, um, you know, why exercise? Why do we harp on it so much? Um, exercise, of course, is, is very important for everyone, but particularly with someone with MS. Because as we know, when you have multiple sclerosis, there's always that concern of exacerbations that are going to bring you down a peg. Um, so if you start at a higher place in terms of fitness, you're going to fare through those exacerbations a lot better. Um, so you want to think of exercise as building a savings account. Um, so you want to build up a reserve of strength and balance and cardiorespiratory endurance um, just in case you do have those exacerbations. So there's much research out there as to how exercise is beneficial. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee just how significantly um, exercise will improve your abilities, but we can guarantee that you're going to be better off for exercising as opposed to not. So what the research tells us is that exercise can improve your mobility, and along those lines it can decrease your risk of falls. Um, it can also decrease pain. Um, when people exercise, sometimes their body produces natural pain-killing um, medications. Um, exercise can decrease fatigue. It can also decrease um, depression and anxiety. Um, and it can, um, I was just reading an article recently that it can slow the progression of cognitive changes. It will also improve your sleep pattern and, of course, um, prevent secondary health problems that come along with a uh, sedentary lifestyle. So what should be in an exercise program? What makes up a comprehensive exercise program? It should include flexibility exercises, strength training exercises, um, balance, um, sometimes also called vestibular retraining exercises, as well as endurance training or cardio exercises. So what I'm going to do now is, is take each of those individually and kind of go through some exercise um, ideas that are out there, some equipment that's out there. So first of all, as far as flexibility exercises, um, you know, very often people will focus on exercising um, or stretching their legs. Um, and one, if you have difficulty reaching down to stretch your, your calf or your hamstring, some devices that are out there are one that's shown here. It's a TheraBand stretch strap. Um, so you can loop one of those loops around your foot while you hold on to a more proximal loop to perform the stretch. But you can also consider low-tech issues like um, using a belt and kind of lassoing your, your foot, um, using a dog leash so the loop of the dog leash would go around your foot, or using a towel. 
Now, as far as stretching, you can perform you know, set repetition of exercises, or you can just look to um, positioning that limb in a minimal amount of stretch over a longer period of time, which is also very effective. So these are a couple of examples of what you can do for stretching out your ankle. Um, the top one is called a jazz splint, and you can see there's a little knob there to uh, increase how much dorsiflexion um, you're putting your foot in, how much your toes are pulled up. This bottom one here is called a multipotus system. Um, and let me get my little cursor here. So it, the nice thing about this splint is that you can see here there's a metal bar that runs the length of the brace that goes behind your calf and behind your heel and up the bottom of your foot. But right here by your um, heel, is the metal is, is bowed out so that your heel isn't touching anything. So it's also going to prevent getting pressure sores, which can happen if you're in bed for any length of time. Also on this splint is this little kickstand that you would put out so that your foot doesn't roll out to the side like our legs do when we're just relaxed. And next one. Thanks. So the top um, picture is a hip abductor wedge. So if you have trouble with, with either spasticity or tightness in your hip adductors, in other words, if your legs are clamped together frequently, um, this might be a good positioning device. And now you can either sleep through the night with these devices, or you can just spend an hour or so if you're laying down taking a nap or watching TV, um, even just an hour or so in these devices will be helpful. So this hip abductor wedge is frequently used in patients who have had orthopedic surgery, such as total hips or total knees. Um, so it's, it's fairly easily found, and it's a good way to keep your legs separated and stretch those hip abductors. The bottom um, splint, oops, Sorry, the bottom splint is called a Dyna splint, and the joint of this is spring-loaded. Um, so if someone has a severe tone, they can overcome that spring, and that wouldn't be appropriate. But if you have a mild amount of tone and tightness, um, this also may be a good way of stretching out your hamstrings, and you can also get Dyna splints for other joints as well. So when we talk about flexibility, um, one of the reasons why flexibility is so important for people with MS is for a couple of reasons. One is as we get older, everyone should work on flexibility because as we get older, our muscles are just innately tighter. But um, it, with MS, you run the risk of developing spasticity, that, that um, jumpiness of your muscles or being sensitive to being stretched. Um, and that can be, that spasticity can be relaxed through flexibility exercises. So um, a standing table has multiple benefits. It, we use it for stretching and spasticity issues. But also getting up on your feet, of course, is really good for your GI system, your urinary system. Um, there are multiple reasons why standing can be good. However, the caveat with people with MS is that, especially if you haven't stood for long periods of time or you've been on steroids off and on over the years, the concern is, are your bones strong enough to standing? So so if you haven't stood for long periods of time, it's really important to discuss with your doctor as to whether or not um, your bones are strong enough for this activity. Next one. Thanks. So for strengthening exercises, these, um, this equipment isn't really adapted per se, but um, so you can find these very often in a lot of sporting goods stores as well. The um, top, these weights up here, the advantage of getting weights like these um, is that they're adjustable. So instead of getting multiple weights of different amounts. This weight it can go anywhere from one pound, if you just have one of these, um, these bars in there, or up to 10 pounds if you use all of the bars. Um, and this weight also is Velcroed around your limb. So like Julianne was talking about, if you have trouble with um, hand weakness, but your shoulder and your elbow still have strength and you want to strengthen those more, you can Velcro these around your wrist to not have to worry about holding on to the weights.
Um, and then also in the bottom picture is TheraBand or TheraTube, which is a stretchy um, material. It comes in different colors that have different amount of resistance. And the nice thing about TheraBand or TheraTube is that you can travel with it. You know, it's very small and compact, and you can attach it to different things. You can attach it to parts of your wheelchair, onto a door, um, you know, bed frame, any sort of thing. So now sometimes people will want to exercise their legs in bed, and maybe they've been given a, um, a list of exercises to do by their therapist, but the bed sheets just provide too much friction and they can't move their legs in bed. So some things to do um, to cut down on that friction is, is putting your, your leg on something that's slippery, like a sliding board, a transfer board, or a cookie or pizza sheet. Um, and then of course you'd want to put like a sock or a pillowcase on your, your foot so it slides over this, these things really easily. Another option, you know, certainly exercise can be fun. And the Wii is a good way to pass a long period of time and not realize how long you've been exercising. Um, so there are multiple games that can be played on the Wii. And if you want to increase how much exercise you're getting out of the activity, you can always add weights to your arms. Um, and then you, know, you can force yourself to use your non-dominant or your weaker side uh, to do the activity. In the pool, pool is a great place for strengthening um, because the pool can either provide buoyancy to a weak muscle or as you're moving the limb through the water, um, it can provide some resistance as well. So a couple of ways to get more resistance from pool exercises, the top picture um, show some paddles and it's kind of like a fan. So you can either keep the fan open for less water resistance, or you can close the fan up for more water resistance. Um, so you can, you can re really control how much you're exercising that day. The bottom picture is, I'm um, sorry for the typo, they're water dumbbells. Um, and they come in different sizes. And we can use this for resistance, because when you try to push these down through the water, it provides a lot of resistance. But the other thing we use these water dumbbells for is actually for balance. So if you're w doing some walking back and forth in the pool and you find that you're pretty imbalanced, sometimes we'll use these. If you, if you have one in either hand, it can give you that just little bit of balance so you can get across the pool more smoothly. Um, also in the pool is a great place to just lay on your back and either just relax to relax some of that spasticity and tightness or to lay on your back to do some arm exercises or leg exercises without the effects of gravity. And a good way to get some good flotation in the pool is using flotation noodles. So um, I've used those like the picture shows underneath someone's pelvis. Um, you can also put one in your upper back, under your neck, under your knees, wherever you need the flotation. Now, one of the challenges people with MS can have with exercise is that it can overheat them. And 80% of people with MS have difficulty with heat because those, those nerves that are still partially damaged just don't function well when they're heated up. So, um, and some people are so sensitive that even one degree temperature difference from working out can, can mean a big difference as far as um, function after you've been exercising. So sometimes you have to think a little bit about how to keep yourself cool while you exercise. Now one of the high-tech ways is the vest that's shown up above that's a cooling vest. Um, but some of the lower-tech ways are using a spray bottle, um, air conditioning, uh, exercise next to a fan, drinking cold water while you exercise. Um, also keeping your neck and your head cool or is one of the most efficient ways of keeping your body cool. So you can always take a, a cap and put it in cold water and put it on your head to try to keep your head cool. Um, what this woman has around her neck is um, kind of like a tie that's filled with this gel type of substance. And when it gets wet, it's cooling. And you can find those in um, REI, different outdoor um, uh, equipment stores. The other issue to remember too is if you are doing pool exercises is to make sure you're exercising in pools that are no hotter than 80 to 84 degrees. 
So balance, how can you work on balance? You don't really need adaptive equipment for balance. You just have to adapt how you use it. So you can see the gentleman in the top picture is exercising with the Wii, but he is, does have his walker there for balance. He has the wheelchair behind him for safety. And then he also in this picture has a therapist or somebody standing next to him just in case. Um, but in the bottom picture, it also shows you that that Wii platform there's no rule that says you have to stand on it. So you could even get the Wii platform um, and sit on it or kneel on it and do like the skiing um, games or other games that involve weight shift and balance. So cardio endurance exercises. On the top left corner, um, the woman is using a flexisizer. And that flexisizer can be programmed to either move your limbs passively, and you can see you can move your arms and your legs with it, um, or you can program it for active um, exercise or even resisted exercise. Uh, the picture to the right is an arm bike, and um, Julianne was talking about a pedal exerciser, which would be even a lower tech, low, um, less costly arm bike that you could have in your home. And in the bottom picture is a SciFit exercise bike. Um, and the nice thing about this bike is that you can, there's a seat that comes with it, so you can sit on a seat while you perform the exercise. Or in this picture, the seat has been moved away so the gentleman can pull his wheelchair up to the bike and just use it from his wheelchair. You'll notice on his feet there are these booties to keep his feet um, in place so they don't fall off just a regular pedal. What I've done low-tech wise um, is if you have a, an exercise, a stationary bike, and you have trouble keeping your feet on the pedals, you can do one of two things. You can um, ace wrap your feet to the pedals, or I've even taken like an old pair of shoes or a cast shoe and bolted, the, bolted them to the pedal, and then you can attach your foot to that. Um, and you can see in this picture too that he can use his arms to move his legs. And again, this can be set up with resistance or no resistance. So in the pool is also a good way to do cardio endurance exercises. And if you want to get out to the deep end um, and do some jogging, uh, what this person's wearing is an aqua jogger vest, which is good for flotation. You can also use noodles um, under your arms uh, to keep yourself floating in the deep end of the pool as well. In the bottom picture, um, if you're unable to move a, a regular bike on your own, but you want to get your legs um, exercising for the aerobic workout of it, this is an electrical stimulation bike. So this gentleman has electrodes attached to his the front and back of his thigh as well as to his bottom. And they're attached to a computer which sequentially stimulates those muscles. So basically he's getting a workout on that stationary bike as though he was physically doing it 100% himself. Um, now this is not going to get muscles working that haven't been working, but it allows you to use your legs to get aerobic workout. So exercise can also be really fun. And I know for myself, I get a much better workout when I'm on the road on my bicycle than when I'm in the fitness center on a stationary bike. So you have to know where you're most motivated and can get the best workout. So um, these are two examples of hand cycles to get you out in the road. You'll notice in the top picture, he's actually sitting in his wheelchair. So this is a hand cycle that can be attached to your wheelchair. Um, and the bottom picture is a hand cycle that you would transfer into. So if you're particularly interested in getting up speed um, and, and, in, and long distance bike rides, this may be a more efficient model. And then of course in, in the winter there's also endurance exercises that can be fun. So these are examples of how to get out in the snow. And the top picture is a sit ski, um, and there are two types. This is a mono ski where there's just one ski that he's um, balanced on, but you can also use bi skis which have two skis underneath you so it's a little easier to balance. Um, and the bottom picture is um, a cross country ski. So resources, um, some of these are similar to what Julianne had shown. Um, so Patterson Medical is a good resource. 
access to recreation. If you have any ideas for how you would, you know, certain recreational activities you want to adapt, this is a great source to look to see what's out there for adaptation. So access to recreation. Sprint Aquatics is where we get most of our um, pool therapy equipment. Um, restorative Therapies is the maker of that electrical stimulation bike, the RTI bike. And the PolarBearCoolers.com, that's where that cooling vest comes from that I showed you a picture of. Great. Thank you so much, Kathy. That was wonderful. And uh, bef before we go into the Q&A period, uh, I do have an additional polling question. And this one is, how confident are you now um, in adding adaptive equipment to your exercise r routine? Um, extremely confident, somewhat, not very confident, or just not confident at all. Uh, let me go ahead and put those results up in the screen. Great. It looks like um, Wonderful. We've got some confident um, participants here this evening, and uh, let's move into the question and answer period. Um, the first question that I have here is, I have muscle loss on one side of my body. How can I compensate for this? And uh, it looks like she's tried um, sitting with a cushion on one side and uh, placed a rolled blanket against her thigh. Um, she's also doing um, therapy in the pool for balance. I don't know if you, and you know again, feel free. It can be both of you that replies. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I guess it would just be very. Specific. It would depend on the activity you're trying to do. Um, you know, certainly in the pool, the pool could be a great place to the buoyancy of the water can compensate for the weak side. Um, so it might have a better chance of keeping up with the um, stronger side. Um, and also, like what I was showing you with the, the hand cycles that allow you to move your legs with your um, arms, that also could be a way of compensating for that. Okay. Any Anything you would like to add, Julianne? Um, it sounds to me like it might be a good idea um, to be able to stretch both sides of the body. Um, in an exercise program, so being able to address flexibility because the one side that is your stronger side is going to fatigue from being the strong side all day long, and the other side is going to shorten a little bit. Um, and so being able to balance that out would probably not only feel great, uh, but also be really good for you and probably help reduce some fatigue. So it's a good question. Thank you. Uh, here is another one. Um, has anyone written an exercise program for the Wii that is geared towards those of us with MS? Not that I know of. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll echo that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's uh, something that uh, needs to be done. Um, here's another one. Are there any shoes that you recommend for use in the water that can be worn while exercising? Maybe this is in and out of water use. Right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go first on that one. Um, there's, there's quite a number of shoes that are out there, um, and they range from probably really challenging to get on and off wet feet um, to pretty simple. Um, uh, Tiva makes uh, water sandals. In fact, just about everybody makes water sandals now. Keen, Tiva, um, Nike. Um, and, and, and like I said, there's varying degrees of, of, of ability to get in and out of them, from a you know, nice simple Velcro to you know, the water shoes that you have to, fit, to slip on like a moccasin. So um, it really kind of depends on, on, your, on what you, how much time and effort you want to put into it and, and um, um, how much money you want to spend on it. Um, I think the, the, the Keens and stuff are probably the easiest because they have a closed toe, so you don't stub your toe in the water. And um, they're a little bit uh, easier to get on because they just have like an elastic strap. Um, I find that the Tevas, the bottom of them, the sole, will sometimes uh, get caught underneath the ball of your foot um, or kind of drag in the water. So that's my two cents. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, another question that we have is, um, is there a suggestion on a percentage of time that um, individuals should spend on flexibility, strength, balance, and cardio? 
Um, well, I think that's very individualized for um, someone with MS. You know, in the general population, we recommend um, 20 to 30 minutes of cardio four time, three to four times a week. But with individuals with MS, you really have to look at a couple of things. One is, what is your energy budget when you woke up that day? Um, so do you have the energy in your energy budget to exercise? What else do you need to accomplish in that day? Um, and you need to find a happy medium so that you're not too fatigued after you finish exercising. Because even flexibility exercises um, can, can make you fatigued. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, Julianne? Um, no, I agree with Kathy that um, you know, the mix of, of what you need to do can vary from person to person. So somebody may uh, benefit more from flexibility stretching exercises. Um, we all benefit from, from cardio aerobic exercise. I think that's always a, uh, a, a really important one. But, you know, someone may want to weight their, their program more heavily toward flexibility um, and do that maybe more times or spend more time in that. So it's, it's really individual. I agree. Thank you. Um, another question I have here is how do you work your heart when you can only go one mile without tingling or numbness? Um, I think one thing that's important is to explore different exercises to see if you can find one that is tolerable. That's probably the main suggestion I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's um, quite a few different ways to to gain um, cardiac exercise, and uh, earlier we had mentioned uh, therapy or physio balls. Um, you can work your heart rate up pretty good on those, and um, that may or may not. It just depends um, on, on, on what's going on for that individual, but um, that might be a nice way to get a cardiac or cardio workout. Great. Thanks so much. Um, another question. Have you worked with anyone with Nordic walking poles? Can these assist with balance, gait, and peripheral vision? Um, it sounds like this person maybe has some uh, vision issues. Um, yes, I have had some individuals who find them very beneficial. It depends on how much assistance you need for balance because certainly you can only put so much pressure through those. Um, the nice thing about Nordic walking poles, um, and I think a lot, most of the research has been done more with the Parkinson's population, but it can help you keep a rhythm to your walking. Um, and also for some people who just need a little balance assistance, that can be all they need, and um, some people prefer the looks of a Nordic walking stick as opposed to a cane or such. Sure. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Julianne? Uh, no. Okay. Thanks so much. Um, here's another one. I have limited mobility. What can I do to increase my endurance and strength? What can I do at home or outside the home that doesn't, maybe doesn't necessarily require um, a PT script, but maybe um, just useful exercises at home? Um, you know, it's it's hard to say without actually seeing you <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as, you know, what you do have available for exercise, what muscle availability you have. Sure. Um, here's one. Do you, um, can you recommend videos or home programs um, in addition to, for example, the Wii? I know the MS Society, the National MS Society, does provide um, some DVDs on their website. There are, and um, in Colorado, um, I know on the uh, public television channel, uh, in the early morning, there's a woman who does sit and be fit. Um, and actually some occupational therapists I see in the credits uh, worked with her on the program. It's really very, very well done. So it might be something to look into um, in the public television stations in your area if they have sit and be fit. Great, thanks. Uh, another question is, do you know of a national gym chain or program um, that is adaptive equipment friendly um, or is there a resource for someone to find a similar gym locally? 
Hmm. Sorry, you know, I, I've, heard, I've, I've heard of a couple of chains like um, Bally's and um, 24-Hour Fitness that in some locations their facilities are accessible. Um, as far as having adaptive equipment, not so much. And certainly it's um, area specific. Like out here in Southern California, there's a phenomenal gym put, um, that was put together by the Goodwill Industries that's all accessible. Great. Um, anything you'd like to add, Julianne? No, I, I agree with that. Check in. Um, it, it, that might be a good place to check in with a local MS chapter to find out who 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 maybe has has taken the time to do that and um yeah I agree with that. The, I live in a really small community and I think the the local gyms rather than the chains are a lot more receptive to making adaptations for people because they really want to keep you happy and and uh you know it's a, it's a good PR kind of thing. Great, thanks. Uh another question is how long should I use um a JAS ankle each day or per day? Well, what I always tell people is to first of all figure out what's going to work for you. Um, you don't want to make a New Year's resolution you just can't keep. Um, so the ideal is to use it at least for a half hour. Um, and certainly you could use it all night long if you could sleep in it. Or you know, try to figure out in your day how much downtime you have. Is there a period of day where you're watching TV? That would be a great time to throw it on. Great. Uh, what should I do when gentle exercise and stretching can cause painful MS spasms? I have chronic progressive MS. Um, you know, not to plug our professions, but you may <laughs> want to see a therapist because sometimes <laughs> it's a matter of positioning yourself just um, in a certain way so you're less apt to trigger the spasms. Um, certainly the slower you start a spasm, I mean the slower you start a stretch, the less apt you are to trigger a spasm as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I absolutely concur with that. That um, uh, sometimes just learning how to how to engage the stretch can can make all the difference. Certainly. Uh, another question is this individual has arthritis combined with MS. Um, oh, this actually is maybe post-exercise. Um, my husband wants the hot tub high in the upper 90s. Um, I need it cooler for my MS. Are there su suggestions on convincing him to lower the temperature to the 80, 84 degrees? Um, you know, perhaps maybe some facts that she can follow up with. Well, one would hope that <laughs> if you know how it affects you, <laughs> that would be convincing enough. <laughs> um, but certainly you can go online um, and Google the topic and you should be able to pull up articles on it. Certainly. Uh, another question is, and uh, I think this would be specifically maybe for you, Kathy, um, this person wants a little more detail if possible on the slide cookie sheet. Um, mm -hmm. She's saying maybe I don't understand what, what the friction problem is. It, this is for laying down exercises, so not standing up exercises. For laying down exercises, sometimes um, a therapist will teach people exercises to do in bed. Um, but sometimes if your legs are so weak, just that friction from the sheets um, and the cushy mattress makes it difficult to slide your leg out or just slide your leg up. And so that's where the cookie sheet slide board comes in. You can put it underneath your heel to cut down that friction. Great. I um, appreciate that. Um, another question I have here is um, I'm unable to stand on one leg without support. Um, I'm trying to lose weight. Is the recumbent bike my only form of exercise to lose weight? Um, it, you know, it, it it would be worth exploring whether you have enough balance to use an elliptical. Um, certainly, again, there's the pool. 
but otherwise the recumbent bike is very often the best thing because then you don't have to worry about your balance. Is there anything you'd like to add, Julianne? Uh, no. Great, thanks. Um, another question that I have here is um, a recent research article discussed treatment for balance issues using visual training. Um, do you have information on this type of program for balance problems? And are there other PT activities for balance problems? Yes. Um, so with our balance, the way we keep our balance is we use three primary sensory inputs. We feel the floor through our feet to know whether or not we're stable. We use our vision and we use our inner ear. And sometimes, very often in people with MS, their inner ear isn't functioning up to par for one reason or another. Usually it's a circuitry going to and from the inner ear that's faulty. But sometimes, just like we can get muscles stronger with exercise, sometimes we can get that inner ear connection stronger and make your balance better. So what we'll often do is have people, um, if they can, stand on foam and then do activities with their eyes, um, following an object back and forth, that sort of thing, so that they can't use their eyes to get a visual reference point. Um, sometimes people with MS also develop visual issues. And um, if that's the case, what we'll often do is combine some of the exercises we would do for their visual issues with some balance activity, um, you know, like using the Wii or standing on a foam while doing some other sort of visual, visual exercise. Great. Um, anything you'd like to add, Julianne? No. Thanks. Um, here is one. Um, exercises that can be done to uh, make your legs stronger if you're mostly in a wheelchair, um, maybe a way to exercise paralyzed legs independently if possible. Well, that would be the RTI electrical stimulation bike. Um, would be the best bet because that's going to use electrical stimulation to get the muscles working. And again, it's not going to um, make bring muscles back that haven't been functioning on their own, but it is going to allow those legs to move um, so you can still get the same cardio uh, endurance benefit of exercising. Great. Um, another um, is, are exercises that can be done using a walker, um, or what about a power chair? Um, well, certainly the Wii could be used from a power chair. Um, there are TheraBand exercises that can be used. You, know, you can pull up to those um, stationary bicycles or an armorgometer. Um, and then as far as the walker, it, there are many exercises that you can use very often in a traditional gym. Again, it's just a matter of figuring out which ones your legs will will be able to do. Certainly. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add, Julianne? Uh, no, there's not. Thanks. Uh, another question we have is, I am soon to have gastric bypass surgery. Uh, this will help with issues, but is there a recommended strength exercises that are better because of lost protein. Hmm. Yeah, that might be a might be a stumper. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Julianne? Um, I'm kind of reading the question again just to make sure I've got you. You know, um, I, I think that's a great question. Um, probably better answered by a nutritionist. But I would think anything that involves weight bearing um, would be helpful because that you know stimulates our our bone density and our bone mass. Um, and I don't know particularly if um, doing um, strength training, you know, where you're doing lower reps and higher, um, is something you would want to avoid at that point, or or not. I you know it's a good good question, but maybe a nutritionist could answer that better. <laughs> Great. Um, another um, question, and I hope that I'm reading this correctly. Um, hence for putting on Job's stocking. 
I saw that one, and that is an excellent question because those are those are tricky. Um, <laughs> um, probably one of the better things I've seen over the years is um, uh, do, do you have access or have you tried um, a sock aid in the past? Um, just because um, they make one that is hard plastic rather than soft and floppy, and that seems to help with the the Job's stockings. And then they make one that's double, so you, it's it's for both of your legs. So of course the trick there is getting both legs up at the same time and then pulling on it. And um, so there's you have to play with it a bit, but. Um, that sometimes is helpful just because they don't have a lot of give in them. So those are two, you know, the harder um, uh, sock aids are, are some of the better things I've seen in the past um, other than just a really dynamite helper. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then also taking it in, in small pieces uh, and positioning the rest of your body so that it's well supported um, so that you can really put your energy and strength into uh, rolling those socks on. Kathy, do you have any? Um, there's also, you should be able to Google um, compression stocking donning devices. There's, if you have an open toe stock, there are these nylon um, sleeves that you can put on your leg, and then the compression stocking will slide over your foot and ankle a lot easier, and then you pull out that uh, nylon sleeve through the open toes. Um, and then also they have uh, rubber gloves that have a lot of tackiness to them so that you don't have to grab the stocking and pull. You can just basically rub it up your leg using the rubber glove. Great. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, another question I have here is, um, I, and it looks like there have been a couple of people that have asked about yoga, um, Pilates, Tai Chi. Um, do you have suggestions for that perhaps with someone that's in a wheelchair <clears throat> or, or just in general with uh, MS? And that might be a general question. So uh, probably the best bet is to call your local MS Society to see if they um, know of particular uh, places that have someone who's versed in adapting um, yoga and Tai Chi, but they do exist out there. Yeah, they do. And some forms of yoga um, are a little more user-friendly. Like um, there's, a, there's a hot yoga, which obviously wouldn't be a good choice. Um, but then there's there's also uh, I think it's you know, I'm going to get my yogas confused, but Iyengar I believe um, you can use props to help you with the stretch, and so that that can be something that you can use. You know everybody uses them in class, and and it's just a really nice way to get the stretches. You are most yoga teachers are pretty good about knowing how to use them, um, but my word of caution on that would be um, sometimes they will ask someone to overstretch. And um, so that, that's just something to think about. Um, it might be good to talk first with a physical therapist um, about how much stretching is good for you and, and then start a yoga class uh, might be an idea if that's something that gives you pause. Great. Um, I know that uh, you discussed um, cooling techniques during exercise. Um, this is a question about pre-cooling before exercise, like maybe um, a cold bath or a cold shower. Um, do you know if that would be effective as well? That can help if you start with your core temperature even cooler. Um, also, there's always a suggestion, too, of making sure what time of day you're exercising. So exercising in the cooler parts of the day. Also, our body temperature tends to be cooler in the morning versus in the evening, so that's also a better time of day. But yeah, that, that would be a good idea to cool your body off first. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and another question I have here is, um, and this is, maybe this is answered in the resources, but um, a question about getting uh, TheraBands. Um, it just started with a specialist um, PT, and um, are there maybe a, a national chain that would sell a, a TheraBand or 
would that be a more specific store? Um, you can get it through the North Coast um, mm -hmm. catalog, the Patterson Medical catalog. Oh, right. And in, in most therapy sessions, um, you'll get some for well as, as a part of your therapy session uh, sometimes to get you started too. Wonderful. Um, and I think we've got um, time to take, uh, take one more. Um, another question that I have here is, do you have any experience or feedback on the power plate, um, which I guess is a new equipment that um, can possibly reverse loss of bone density or muscle atrophy? I don't know if you've come across those in your line of, lines of work. I believe the power plate is is a plate that vibrates. Yeah, I was going to um, ask that for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think that is. Is that correct? Is that? That's yeah. That's my understanding. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sorry, this was a, a pre pre webinar question. And I have have heard of it used successfully um, with people with incomplete spinal cord injuries, uh, but it can it can facilitate your your muscle control. So if you have muscles that are, are weak or only partially being triggered, that seems to heighten the response you can get from a muscle. Great. I appreciate it. Um, we just have um, one, one last question here, and then we'll need to wrap this up. Um, this individual is in a powered wheelchair. When I work out, I never seem to get in any real cardio. How would, how would I know what I'm doing and when to stop? Um, do you have suggestions for that? Julianne, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> I'll let you go first, Kathy. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, you know, you can go by um, checking your pulse uh, to see if your pulse is increasing. Um, also, you know, there's, there's a rate of perceived exertion scale to just saying, okay, do I feel like that was an easy workout, a hard workout, that sort of thing. Um, those are the main ideas. Yeah, I, I absolutely concur with that. Um, you know, and you know how much, you know, how are you starting to break a sweat? Um, how much, how much, you know, how much does your breathing in, increase with the exercise? Uh, would be good ways to to know about that. Um, Aquatic exercise again in 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 that situation is is really a great tool, and it just it just allows your body to to move more freely. Um, it takes much less effort to move your body in the water, um, and so you can you can get a really nice cardio exercise in water. Wonderful! I really appreciate it. Um, a great presentation, and thanks so much for um, the Q and A with the participants, and also a big thank you to the participants who joined us for the webinar and submitted their questions. Um, we had a great turnout and we're very excited for the upcoming webinars. Uh, the next webinar is on May the 8th at the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The topic will be cooling techniques and devices. And we have a completely new format to our webinars. Two to three experts present, one topic for discussion, zero charge to you. Join us live from the convenience of your home or office at no charge for an in-depth discussion on topics relating to exercise, nutrition, communication, symptom man management, and total health. This unique webinar series will provide insight from more than one MS expert so you can gain additional knowledge relating to multiple sclerosis. Interact with our team of can-do MS consultants, ask questions, and learn how to adopt healthy lifestyle behaviors, actively co-manage your MS, and live your best life. You can register for this and other webinars, again, at www.mscando.org. And for those participating live, live this evening, as soon as the presentation is over, you will see a sur survey appear on your computer screen. Please take a moment to complete the survey and help us continue to pr improve our webinars. We value your feedback and your input. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks again to Kathy and Julianne. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.